Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Today I want to talk about Iran and Saudi Arabia and some of the other countries that are going to be now enveloped with this conflict that is being generated. You know, one is the conflict between um, Israel wants to attack and have the U.S. attack Iran. That's going on, but that's not what I'm talking about today. I want to talk about the conflict of the between Iran and Saudi Arabia. The two countries who have backstabbed Islam the most. Saudi Arabia, they need to give us the Muslim Ummah back Mecca and Medina into our control and let because they have gone the the point beyond the point of uh, they have gone beyond the point of return. They have lost their authenticity at any level. First of all, the whole Muslim world is getting ready to be divided into three very apparent groups. So you have the Shia that are going to be with Iran very clearly. Our Salafi brothers are going to be mostly with Saudi Arabia and the brothers that are in Tasawwuf or follow the Mazahibs, they're going to be with Turkey. So you have right off the back with the situation that is developing in the Middle East, you have the whole Muslim Ummah divided between these three groups. <clears throat> now, let me start with Iran. Iran is the country that was, you know, brought the revolution in 1979 to basically try to build a model society based upon Islam. But it has gone far away from that. Forget about the fact that there are Aqidah issues. Forget about the fact that there are Fiqhi issues. Forget about that. Just talking from what Iran was itself supposed to be. If you read the writings of Ali Shariati and some of the other writers or how Iqbal was used during the Iranian revolution to build this Islamic society, right? Uh, it, it never happened. Not only did it never happen, whatever two-step progress, three-step progress that had at one time originally been there, you have backtracked a hundred steps. And the point of no return really uh, you know, the problem of the, of this time of fitan is that it, the good and the bad are mixed. And so people see either the good, people see what they want to see. So they see only the bad or they see only the good. And they don't see the mixture between the good and the bad. And I'm not talking from a qida perspective or fiqhi perspective. I'm talking about as it is. So, you know, so Iran was praised and looked up to by even Palestinian Muslims for standing up for the Palestinian cause, uh, as is Turkey, right? And uh, But at the same time, now it has justified the blood of the Muslims, killing the civilian Muslims in uh, Syria, supporting the Alawites, you know, uh, the, the, the extreme Shia Alawites, pr protecting them and supporting them uh, and protecting the Syrian regime and justifying the killing of Muslim blood and shedding the Muslim blood, and, 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 and to do that at a governmental level as Iran, you know, you can forget the help of Allah. When you have killed and, and spilled blood of Muslims, uh, regardless of if they are Sunni or Shia, it doesn't even matter, because first of all, even as a human being, مَنْ قَتَلَ نَفْسًا بِغَيْرِ نَفْسٍ right? Whoever kills a soul regardless of if they're Muslim or non-Muslim. It's the same. And so uh, now, having said that, you have on the other side, Mr. Saudi Arabia, the Saudi family that has taken over uh, Mecca and uh, has justified uh, it, the killing of Muslims in Yemen and has now the whole region, you know, uh, the whole region is now being divided between the Sunni and the Shia and they're getting ready to fight. No more, no one wants the fight between uh, the US and Iran more than Saudi Arabia does, which is like, like how low do you have to go, right? And uh, what's more interesting is this, is that uh, on the one side, Iran has crossed the limits of any uh, on any level of having honor and the people that were originally with Iran supporting Iran amongst the Muslim population in America and across the world 
that even though if they were Shia, they were, they were the only ones standing up to uh, and speaking the truth uh, to some degree to some people's eyes. Now even that's gone. That's gone. Even the very people who supported Iran in the very beginning uh, and were, uh, were felt that at least Iran's doing something to speak up against America and its atrocities, uh, even that, that support is now gone. And now Iranian government, the and what's interesting is the ulama are on both sides. So you have the Shia ulama, ulama who are Muslim ulama, according to them. And you have the Salafi ulama who are the, the authentic ulama of the Muslim world. Yet these ulama of Saudi Arabia, I don't know where they are. Uh, I mean, in the sense that where are the ulama who stand up to the truth? And uh, so they're all quiet. They've all given in. And now you have seminars, uh, uh, cinemas in, uh, and you have halal, quote unquote, uh, dance clubs and everything going on in Saudi Arabia. And uh, so you have a situation where Egypt and Saudi Arabia and other Arab countries are aligning themselves against Iran. And Iran is forming its own alliance with Qatar and other countries against Saudi Arabia. And so you have the whole Middle East ready to fight itself only for Israel to come and pick up the pieces when you two are done fighting with each other. And you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, how many times you try to start a war and Allah doesn't let it happen. So with Allah's mercy, it doesn't happen because innocent people's lives will be lost. But both these regimes, don't care about Muslim blood. They don't care about Islam. And they don't care about Muslim unity, right? They only care about their vested interests. Okay? And, uh, see, uh, the, 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 the Saudi regime, the rulers of Saudi Arabia, they're all secular people. They have very little to do with Islam. And they're more, you know, they are, uh, spoiled brats, uh, who, have the intellect of a literalist pedestrian who's a literalist, uh, you know, a very myopic view of the world and a very myopic view of Islam. And so you have a terrible situation in Saudi Arabia. And because of its power and because of its prestige and because of having the honor of having Mecca and Medina, it is, it is uh, able to bring with itself uh, some clout and force and, and a certain type of hegemony and force the other Muslim countries to, to side with it because we are the Sunni and they are the Shia and they're better destroyed sooner rather than later. And then on the other side, you have Iran who will just not stop being mischievous. There is no doubt that Iran does things on purpose just to take Saudi Arabia off. Right, just to just to hurt Saudi Arabia, and Iran is meddling in the affairs of the other uh, Middle Eastern countries, right? And um, and it's just trying to pick a fight. Uh, Iran uh, has been very mischievous because it gathers these weapons in the name of trying to fight Israel, but now these weapons are being used to kill Muslim civilians, and um, and so. Uh, on the one side, you have the U.S., Israel, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, and all these other countries. And on the other side, you have Iran and maybe some support uh, from uh, to Iran from uh, from from other Arab countries like Qatar. And they may get some support from uh, parts of Jordan. They may get support from parts of Palestine. They may get some support from parts of Turkey. And so you have this civil war that is going to start. And the ending of that is, the ending, the ending of that is, you know, there's the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in which the Prophet said that I see an Ethiopian breaking the Kaaba, brick by brick. Now this hadith, most of the muhaddisin agree that this hadith is right before the Day of Judgment. So other than this, there are a hadith, for example, saying that Medina will be empty and there will be no one to pray in Medina. In the, I'm saying when I say Medina, I mean the mosque of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. No one to pray in the masjid of the Prophet 
except that there will be dogs in there, wild dogs running around in the Masjid of the Prophet, no one to pray there. And before the event of the Mahdi comes, there's a hadith of the Prophet wasallam. two hadiths that I'd like to share with you. Today I'm not, usually, those of you who listen to me know, usually I'd show references. Today I'm not, because I want to keep it short, and I want to specifically focus on the references. And another uh, idea I have for another time where I'm going to actually focus on these um uh, but I'm just giving you the references for those of you that know it, know it. Those of you that don't know it, uh, inshallah, can look up the references yourself. Because when you hear the words, if you type in the words, usually it should come up somewhere in Google. So there is a hadith of the Prophet wasallam that before the Day of Judgment, Hajj will be stopped. And when the Prophet is talking about this, he's talking about this specifically as one of the signs of the Day of Judgment in the end of times. Number one. Number two. The Prophet ﷺ, other than the hadith where I mentioned the Prophet said, I see a Ethiopian breaking the Kaaba brick by brick. That just happens to be, you know, this one person at the end of times when the Mu'mineen have already been killed because of the wind that comes and takes the soul of the believers. That's already happened and now they're just evil people left and the Day of Judgment will not come and the hour will not come except there will be no one to say Allah at that time as the Prophet ﷺ has mentioned. Um, there's another hadith of the Prophet Wasallam about the fact that before the Day of Judgment, Hajj will be stopped. And there's another hadith of the Prophet Wasallam in which the Prophet said that Mecca will be in shambles. Now, how will uh, it be that there's no one to pray in Medina, in the mosque of the Prophet Wasallam, And there is no one to pray, and, and Mecca has, is in shambles. How does this happen? This happens because of conflicts, because of the conflict that's being created right now, because of the internal conflict that's being created between the princess, uh, the, the, the crown prince, princess and his other rivals currently there. <clears throat> so we have to think and we have to think hard and we have to really, really think about where are we going? You know, well, why is the Muslim Ummah in this turmoil? Why are the why are our priorities so so upside down? That our priority is to hurt the Shia, even though he has. Of course, I'm not Shia, so I have a problem with Shiaism as as a whole. But I know that there are many Shia who are true, who are Muslims, especially the Zaydi Shias, who are the closest to the Sunnis, and they do not curse the companions of the Prophet sallallahu But I want to re-emphasize the point I made earlier. Iran has now backstabbed its own its own Shia uh, movement. And Saudi Arabia has now backstabbed its own Salafi movement. Its own Salafi brothers have been backstabbed by Saudi Arabia taking a 360 degree U-turn from at least pretending to be semi-religious, quasi-religious, uh, and now completely going in the opposite direction towards the Dajjal, literally. And then you have Iran that is also following the footsteps of uh, the Dajjalic system, but in its own way. You see, you cannot be deceived by just because somebody stands up to the United States of America does not necessarily make them right. North Korea stands up to the United States of America. It doesn't make them on the right, right? Uh the the real issue here is what are what they are doing against Islam, and they are violating the teachings of Islam when they are killing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of Muslims in Syria by their support, right? And don't be uh, deceived by uh, the the um, the orations and the the address and them taking away attention from what they are doing to them trying to put the attention on Israel or, you know, trying to pretend like you're standing up from just, for some just cause. You're not. You have, you have betrayed the Iranian revolution. You have betrayed the Iranian vanguard. You have betrayed your own. That's as far as the Iranian ayatollahs and the Iranian government is concerned. And Saudi Arabia has done just much the same and even more with its cinemas and everything. Okay, you have the cinemas in Saudi Arabia, and you have the uh, the um, the fitna that is being created by Iran 
by meddling in the affairs of others, which is completely unnecessary and un-Islamic. And so now the other Muslim countries, and this is the real problem, now other Muslim countries are being forced to choose sides, right? And so some will be on the side of Saudi Arabia, and Saudi Arabia has, you know, the ability to blackmail everyone because it has Mecca and Medina, and will say, would you rather Mecca and Medina be in the hands of Iran rather than us? But they themselves don't have the right to claim any authority or anything over Mecca and Medina themselves. Anyway, I've talked too much today. I'll leave it here. But the Muslim is in turmoil. And the Muslim, Muslim Ummah is being divided between Saudi Arabia, Turkey, and Iran. And we must think carefully about what we are going to do, what side we're going to take, and where we're going to emotionally invest ourselves in which side. And the fact is, you should not take any side, because all of these sides are wrong, dead wrong, dead wrong. And having said that, you know, with the uh, the election that happened where Erdogan is now no longer uh, the victor, and, and, and necessarily he's not necessarily the one in control of things in Turkey. So things are happening there. I will want to talk about that at a certain point too, inshallah ta'ala. So I leave you with these words that the only, the only solution for the Muslims, the only solution is that they have to, the regime, they, we should not be fooled by this. And we need to regather ourselves, reassess ourselves, because the world is changing, the situation is changing, and it is becoming dire and dire. And we are headed for a war with each other, with Muslims versus Muslims. And guess who's going to pick up the pieces at the end, right? Where Mecca will be empty and Medina will be empty. And what did the Prophet say? That when Jerusalem will be on its height of glory, that is when Medina will be at its lowest point, and we are setting our own selves up in that direction. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and guide us. Inshallah ta'ala. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. Make sure to subscribe today and make sure you like and make sure you leave your comments and ideas. Jazakumullah khairan. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. Ashhadu an la ilaha